Single oh. mama smoking cigarettes out oh, window. Windows. Section <coughs> 8 is where I come from, got all tiptoe. If it wasn't for my Jesus, I'd be done for. Done because for. the devil in the shadows in you window. Hey, hey, do it for life. Good afternoon, church. Good, good afternoon, church. As I scan the room, my heart fills with joy. And it fills with joy because I can see that all you young people made it to church this Sunday. Amen. Before we get started, I want to acknowledge a few important people in my life. Um, first and foremost is my wife. Uh, most people don't know, but we actually met in high school at Douglas Anderson when we were 14 years old. 14 years old. So although we've been married about a year now, we've been together going on eight years. And she's been with, through, through, with me through, through my high points and through my low points. And the thing that makes my wife the best wife for me is that no matter what scale I was on, she's always remained consistent. Her love has always remained consistent. Her sacrifice has always remained consistent. So I want to take a moment and honor my wife. I'd also like to uh, honor my brothers, my sisters, my auntie, my mom, my pop. Oh, please, stand up, stand up. Come on now, come on now, come on now. I'm going to honor uh, I want to honor my mom and my pops. They're here as well. You guys can stand up as well. Where are they? Where's mom and pops? Yes. Yes. So crucial. I would not be where I am today without them and them sacrificing for me. Um, just bringing me into a loving environment. Felt like family. Um, I want to shout out my grandmother. And um, it was my grandmother that introduced me to the love of Jesus Christ. Um, at a young age, I was staying with my grandmother and she would read me these Bible stories and she would tell me that God had a plan for my life. And that stuck with me. Yeah, of course. It stuck with me. Uh, my grandma was in the choir and I, I would go to choir rehearsal uh, every, I think it was Thursday, Tuesday, and she had to wake up early for services, but I'd be there and she really inspired me, truly a woman of God. Um, and as close as I got to God, the funny thing is, I will always tell God, God, I love you, but I'm never going to be a pastor. It's just not my, it's not my style. You know, I'm a, I'm a musician. I glorify you that way. But it's a funny thing, you know, when you tell God the things that you won't do. Because he gets the final say. Isn't that? And uh, last but surely not least, I want to honor Pastor Herring and First Lady Herring. You guys know them as of course, of course. You guys know them as Pastor Herring and First Lady Herring. I simply know them as Granddad and Ganny. And um, they've been with me every step of the way, especially transitioning from music to ministry. And they've been here. They've been my rock. They've been solid. So I want to give honor. I thank them and I thank all of Mount Bethel for giving me the opportunity to come here and preach the word of God to y'all today, amen? As I get into this, um, I want to give a forewarning. I won't be holding back, amen? I won't be holding back. So I want to start off with a question. I want you guys to ponder on this. And by the end of it, I think the answer will reveal itself. What do we do when a fire begins to lose its intensity, right? That being said, the topic, the subject for today is, church, can we be better? Amen. I want to start off by turning to Acts chapter 9, verse 1 in the King James Version. That's where we start off. And Saul... Yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest. I'm going to stop right there. Now, before I go any further, I want to set up Saul, which would later become Paul's character development. 
Now, this was a man who had a murderous hatred for Jesus and his followers. It's fair to say that this man was far from perfect. Amen? Amen. Far from it. But it would be a grave injustice to not recognize how short of perfection we, as believers, are as well. There have been many instances in my life where I've acted outside of the will of God. I've cussed people out. I've flat out judged somebody based on how they looked or how I perceived them. I was and I still am far from perfect. The reason I say that is because I just want to establish that we were once not so different from Paul. Amen? Now, keep that in mind as we skip over to Romans chapter 1, verse 1 in the King James Version. Now, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Who is this man? <laughs> Surely this is not Saul. This isn't, this isn't homeboy we was just talking about, right? This can't be. This was the man that was once famously known across all of the land for hating followers of Jesus Christ and opposing the good news. This is no longer Saul. He has now become Paul. What was it that took place in between the events on the road to Damascus at this point in Paul's life? Although he was far from perfect at the start of all of this, it is fair to say that every day he became, get this, better. Although Paul's Damascus encounter with Jesus led to a conversion of Paul's heart, it was a progress for Paul to become the apostle and missionary we know him as today. Right? Now we're going to get back to Paul later, but I want to get a little uncomfortable for a moment. I told you guys, I wasn't holding back. I hear so many believers in, in this generation that act judgmental and nasty towards one another. And, and oftentimes an excuse is made for this behavior along the lines of, well, I'm not perfect and neither are you. Ooh. So many of God's children today lack humility and become arrogant and oftentimes uncorrectable. And every time you confront them, they often say something along the lines of, well, God knows my heart. I'm not perfect. We all fall short of the glory of God. What makes you better than me? <laughs> See, but the thing is that although we all fall short of the glory of God, there was someone who did it. And he is our example. God came down and set aside his divinity to become in the likeness of a mortal man. And as a mortal man, he was tempted, yet he was without sin. Jesus Christ, he is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is our example in all facets of life. He is perfect. So I want to understand this. If we are to follow Jesus as the example, and Jesus was perfect, and we all fall short of the glory of God, which is perfection, why have so many Christians stopped moving? As we get older or further along in our walk of faith, the truth is that we have a tendency as believers to become stagnant, devoid of progressive motion, as still as a sitting water on a hot summer We become saved and, and we have this fire for God that propels us forward in our walk of faith. But somewhere along the line, after God blessed you with your husband, after God got you the home you had been praying for for five years, after the last child goes off to college, 
after I've been in my position in the church for over 10 years. We become, get this, comfortable in complacency. Settling for giving God scraps when he deserves our very best. But this shouldn't be. We as a church have an example. We have a way. We have a light that guides us along the narrow path and he is perfect. Let me give you this analogy. Imagine running after a car going 50 miles an hour. Let's call this car perfection. Now imagine you dedicating your whole life to chasing after this car. Over time, as years pass, you will begin to realize that although you haven't reached the car yet, you have progressively gotten further and further and further from where you first started in the pursuit. What does this look like? Sometimes we need modern examples. Once upon a time, I would have cut you off for talking to me the way that you're talking to me. But I've become more patient. So I walk away and give it to God. Once upon a time, I would have cried my eyes out over the lack of money in my bank account. But I've learned to have more faith in my God and find peace in Him. So I'll go into my prayer closet and seek God for a direction of the matter. Once upon a time, I would have cut you off my life forever for the way that you disrespected me. I don't care if we're family. That's just the word. I got somebody. <laughs> but I know the Lord tells me to forgive others as he forgives me. And he doesn't treat me that way. So I shouldn't treat them that way either. I'm just trying to tell somebody that just because you won't reach the car doesn't mean that you should stop running. One might suggest that we run even faster. Anybody that knows about the benefits of consistently running might know where I'm about to go with this. Now, back in high school, I, I played a little football, and in the summertime, we did something to prepare for the upcoming season known as conditioning, right? Now, my summer consisted of running and, and weightlifting, um, and in Florida, it's hot. So probably about my junior, senior year, I um, abandoned my dreams of making it to the NFL and became a pastor. <laughs> Every day I thank God for air conditioning, amen? <laughs> but, see, as the days went by during the conditioning, I began to notice a change in myself. My endurance progressively increased, and I could run longer than I used to. Yes. My leg muscles increased. So I could jump higher than I used to, right? As I ran, I would consistently tweak how I ran to maximize the amount of distance I would run in an allotted period of time. I say all this to say that when the start of the season came, although I was not the most athletic on my team, I didn't know all of the plays. I had become better than I was last season. You're right, sir. Is there any men and women in the house tonight that's looking to be better than you were last season? Have more patience than you did last season, right? Endure, suffer longer than you did last season. Just trying to make a point here. I just want to make sure I'm in the right place, amen? Turn with me to Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 in the King James Version. I am crucified with Christ. That's a whole sermon, right? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now here, we see that Paul speaks of his previous life dying and the new life he has by the faith of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. I want you guys to hold on to that as you turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31 in the King James Version. I protest 
by your rejoicing, which I have in Jesus Christ, our Lord, I die daily. That's powerful if you can receive it. I die daily. Now, in Galatians, Paul speaks on his old life dying. Yet here in 1 Corinthians, he tells us that he dies daily. How can this be? Now, what is going on here is that every day, Paul is progressively putting to death his sinful nature and receiving new life in Jesus Christ. And every time he puts his old life to death, he becomes more like the light that first pulled him out. See, because in life, I've come to find out that eventually we become whatever we make an effort to consistently focus on. Let us entertain the possibility that Paul had integrated himself into a lifestyle of consistent and better name for God. Yes. Amen? Now, we ought to make an effort to not become stagnant because there's a danger in that kind of stuff. Right, Has anybody ever seen a, a dirty pool during the summertime? I ain't getting this one. We're in Florida. Everybody does see that. If you didn't speak, I, I may have some bad news for you. It might be you. Right? But if you've ever seen a dirty pool during the summertime, you can find all kinds of nasty things in it. Mosquitoes, algae, gnats, sticks, frogs, leaves, all kinds of things. And I'm sure that's not something that you want to swim in, correct? Right? But what if I told you that's how a lot of us look spiritually? So many of us have abandoned the everlasting effort to be better for God, to be more like the King of Kings. We have become like the dirty pool, accumulating so much spiritual gunk and trash, and we didn't want to swim in that pool. Yet we expect the Holy Spirit to flawlessly navigate in this way. Church. Let us not fool ourselves concerning the Holy Spirit and his function in our lives. We don't lead him. He leads us. See, because when you make an effort to be better for God every day, your mind goes through a process of renewal. Turn with me to Romans chapter 12, verse 2 in the New King James Version. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, the KJV dictionary defines renew as a renovation. And as it applies to us as believers, I want you guys to get this. It's a transition of our minds from natural hostility of God and his laws to a love of God and his laws. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. The fruits produced by us making the effort to be better for Jesus is that we will progressively begin to show a desire to detach from the nature of this world and actively seek out God's will concerning every single aspect, situation, and decision in our lives. But this process can only happen if we continue to move forward in our walk of faith. You're right, sir. Making an effort to be better for Jesus, at least better than you were yesterday. God, I see that I have an issue gossiping every time I hang out with her. So today, not tomorrow, because some of us like to put things off to tomorrow, next week, next month, next fast. No, today, I'm going to make an effort to avoid those conversations. Lord, I know I lost control. Again, I went off on my dad. But I know it's just a lack of communication. So today, I will call him and just, just listen. Try to understand his perspective. Right? I can be more patient. I can try having more compassion for him. I can sacrifice this to spend more time with you. God, I'm not perfect, but I can be better. I can be better. So, how do we do that? <laughs> How do we do that?
how do we move forward again? How do we transition from a place of being stagnant back to a place where we are passionately chasing after Jesus? I have four points for you. Number one is repentance. Remember, it always starts with repentance. For some of us, this may be the most difficult point because it requires us to hold ourselves accountable. When we repent, it's more than just saying a simple prayer. To repent means to, to change one's mind, to turn away. Right? What I'm trying to say is that repentance isn't just words. It's an action, a genuine effort to turn away from a particular sin and back towards God. If you're taking notes, I want you to get this right here. True repentance invokes change. Point number two is fasting. Now, some of you are going to walk out these doors today with that fire rekindled to move again but are not quite sure what direction to actually start moving in. When we fast, we move away from the distractions of the world, we submit our flesh, and put ourselves in position to hear God clearly and accurately as we seek out his direction in our lives. Point number three is prayer. Now, my wife can attest to this. I tell people all the time that a majority of our battles in this lifetime will be one not out in the open, You're right, sir. but in our prayer closet. You're right, sir. But the truth of the matter is, some of us haven't been in our prayer closet in so long that the process has become foreign to us. James 5.16 tells us that the prayers of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And without a life of prayer and fasting, it is impossible to live a healthy life and prosperous life as a believer. They go hand in hand. And the final point is the digestion of the word of God. Now I'm specific with this. I didn't just say read the no, word sir. of God. No, I didn't just say a devotion. No, sir. I didn't just say a verse of the day if you got the Bible app. I said digestion of the word of God. It is impossible to know the will of God for your life his nature, and even have faith in his promises without knowledge of his written word. Yes, sir. Just like our natural bodies need nutrients to sustain itself and operate in a healthy manner, our spirits also need nutrients. But the spirit's nutrients does not come from food, but the bread of life, which is the word of God. And the truth of the matter is, some of us haven't fed our spirits in months. Come on, sir. Yet we wonder why we're not producing the fruits of the Holy Spirit in abundance. Dragging ourselves through life day by day, exhausted, frustrated, and overwhelmed. The word of God must be consumed daily to ensure that our spirits are healthy, strong, and producing the fruits of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Now, I ask you all a question in the beginning. What do you do when a fire begins to lose its intensity? You simply add more fuel. Don't think for a second that God is done with the plans he has for your life. We have an eternity of blessings and excitement waiting for us, church. So surely you didn't think that this was all God had in store for you. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what you've been through or how much you've already accomplished. There is so much more. Deeper levels of intimacy with God. Greater understanding of his word in the kingdom of heaven. And so many opportunities for God to do something amazing in your life. But you got to pick yourself up and start moving forward. Amen? In this life that we live, we embark on a walk of faith, not a stand of faith, not a sit of faith. We got to move forward. Now, that being said, you can have the most solos in the choir. You can be a church member for over 30 years. You can witness to over a thousand people. That's all good and fine. 
But if you're not serving God genuinely for his glory, there's some reflective needs to be done. Now, back in the day, my grandma used to always play this song. Um, it's a old, it's a song. <laughs> I'm seeing if I can get the key. Um, but it's, it's accurate. It's accurate. All right. Let it be real. Y'all know the song? Real, real. Let it be real. Let it be real. Everything you do for the master. Let it be real. Real. Can we just say that again? Let it be real. Real. Just let it be real. Is it when you pray? Uh, when you pray, let it be real. Change the way you pray. Everything you do for Jesus, you do for Jesus. Let it be He doesn't give us half effort. He gives us his best. And concerning our very soul, his best was Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters, let us then present to God our very best in everything that we do in this lifetime. Amen? God bless.